Good morning, everyone. It is 8 a.m. in California. It's uh, time to start. Uh, good morning to our colleagues in uh, North America. Uh, good afternoon uh, to our friends in Europe. And uh, good evening, and also in Middle East and Africa. And uh, good evening to our patient uh, tiny male enthusiasts in Asia and uh, Far East. So as you know, global tiny email uh, meetup community continues to grow. And as of today, it includes almost uh, 2,000 people from more than a dozen of uh, different countries uh, all over the world. Uh, hope you all well and uh, healthy during these days. Again, we welcome you and thank you for joining episode three of our bi-weekly tiny email web series. Well, my name is uh, Evgeny Gusev. I am from Qualcomm AI Research. I lead Tiny ML in uh, Qualcomm, and I'm also one of the um, organizers and one of the co-founders of Tiny ML, which we started about uh, a year ago. Uh, it, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, our first sponsor for the Tiny ML Talk webcast series. It is H Impulse. It's an international startup uh, with two offices. One office is here in. Um, in San Jose, in, in the Bay Area, uh, and the other is in Amsterdam. H Impulse provides a developer platform for ultra low power machine learning from design to deployment at scale. So if you're interested, please, please visit the uh, web website, himpulse.com, if, if you're interested to get an account there. And if you're a developer, H Impulse goals is to help you to start and maximize your success with TinyML. Uh, I think it's quite exciting from us uh, to see this interest and companies like H Impulse investing into the ecosystem development and, and supporting uh, TinyML. I, I, I think this is going to, going to benefit all of us. Uh, more sponsorship spots are available. So if you're, if you're interested in supporting TinyML and then exposing your company to this fast growing ecosystem, please contact uh, Betty at uh, datatinyml.org and uh, I think our intent is to keep the TinyML talks free of charge uh, for all the participants so sponsorship is, is quite important and um, appreciate it. Uh, our next uh, talk talks will traditionally take place in, uh, in uh, two weeks so again we are going to have uh, two presentations so one presentation will be uh, uh, given by uh, Hans uh, Reicherhoff from uh, from uh, Facebook Reality Lab. So he's going to cover a tiny email in the uh, for AR uh, applications. And the second will be given by Jamie Campbell from Synoptics on using TensorFlow for, for, for microcontrollers. There is a little bit of a change uh, due to scheduling. It will be uh, on Thursday, uh, May 13th. And as usual, you're going to see announcements and information about the pre-registration by email and um, via social media in a couple of days. So kind of keep an eye on this. And at this point, uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our first presentation. The presenter will be Professor Son Han from MIT, and he will talk about auto ML for tiny ML with once for all network. Uh, Professor Han is uh, very well known in the tiny email community. Uh, he started uh, tiny email back in his uh, uh, Stanford days, and uh, his focus is really on very efficient uh, deep learning computing. Uh, he has done a lot of pioneering work in this uh, uh, area, and uh, that's what he's going to talk today. Uh, obviously, um, I think it's of great interest for, for, for the community. He and his team received uh, a number of uh, awards recently at, at a very prestigious conference like ICLR, FPGA, and then also uh, recently they won uh, two uh, low power competitions at, at CVPR, which again of, of huge interest for, for the tiny email community. I think uh, Professor Han is going to cover some of this in this presentation. I think what is also wor worthwhile to, to know that he is the recipient of the Career Award and uh, the MIT Technology Review Innovation Award under 35. And um, uh, he uh, 
also co-founded and chief scientist of the DP Tech that was acquired by Xilinx. And as I mentioned earlier, he earned his PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford uh, University. So we welcome Professor Khan. And um, so on the, the, the mic is yours. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Um, hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about AutoML for TinyML with Device for All Network. So a su successful machine learning product usually requires many machine learning engineers to tune and design efficient machine learning models. And in order to achieve good accuracy, those models are usually large to have good capacity, make it very slow to run on hardware and require a lot of computation both to train and especially inference, making it challenging to run on the uh, embedded devices. So here uh, we propose um, AutoML for TinyML. So AutoML will require less engineering resources to make the machine learning model design automated. And TinyML will try to make the neural networks smaller and more compact, therefore require less computation and run much more efficient on hardware devices. So today I'm gonna to introduce the West for All network to achieve this. And before that, let's look at our first generation solution of AutoML. So we worked on proxy-based neural architecture search that can uh, automatically find a good uh, model that ran fast. It has the weight sharing mechanism that removed the, the meta controller and the outer loop of a neural architecture search. Thus, it's very efficient and very quick to, uh, to search, saving the training cost by, a lot, by two, other, two or three orders of magnitude compared with the meta controller based approach. And we put the hardware latency into the feedback loop. So the model is not only more accurate, but also faster. Uh, the second step, we uh, worked on AutoML for model compression that can automatically find the redundancy in each layer. For example, in this case, the second layer has 50% pruning ratio, the third layer has 30% pruning ratio. And we find that the AutoML can give a better um, pruning policy than the human design. And here we reduce the, the model size of resident 50 to only 20% compared with, uh, in my PhD, PhD thesis, 29%. And finally, we worked on hardware aware automated quantization to quantize the efficient and pruned model. Okay, so we can figure out automatically how much bits do we need for each layer uh, in support for um, the mixed precision hardware, hardware inference accelerator, okay? And we can cater for different constraints, including model size constraint, uh, latency constraint, and also energy con constraint. And across all these constraints, uh, we outperform the human design, human po design quantization policy by a large margin. So we faced a new challenge after that, how to perform efficient inference on diverse hardware platforms including cloud AI, mobile AI, and also tiny AI. The computation from teraflops per second, gigaflops per second, and tiny AI IoT device less than million flops per second. So different hardware platforms have completely different con resource constraints. We need to customize our models for each platform to achieve the best accuracy efficiency trade-off, especially on those uh, resource constrained edge devices. But to fit all these scenarios is challenging. For example, if we just need to design a product, say an APP for say uh, the latest Samsung um, S10, for example, we just train a mobile net, which will take 200 GP hours to do forward and backward. But if we do need to do neural architecture search, okay, uh, like MNASNet, there is an outer loop, a meta controller uh, to control the search epochs. If we find a good model, then we break. Uh, the training process is very computationally expensive. With an outer loop on, on top of it, it makes the training even more expensive. And after, uh, usually the training is done by uh, a few epochs on ImageNet or pre-trained on Cypher and then transferred to ImageNet. Okay? Therefore, the final selected architecture, we need to pre-train it, which is also expensive. And the training cost will grow linearly if we have a mobile IPP that has to support both the new phone and the older generation phone, both the 2019 Galaxy Note 10 and also 2013 Galaxy S4, for example. 
and there's another outer loop on outside of it for devices. And for many devices, this can be even more expensive. 1,600K GPU hours. And if we translate this to the CO2 emission, according to a study from ACL last year, uh, this will emit hundreds of thousands of pounds of CO2 emission, which cause a big environmental problem. So tiny ML comes at a high cost of big ML. In order to search an efficient model, we need to pay a large overhead for training and search. So this has already been captured by MIT Technology Review last year, saying that training a single AI model can emit as much carbon as five cars in, in their lifetimes. Um, this is a severe problem where um, the a common carbon foot, if you see the carbon, common carbon footprint benchmarks, the pounds of CO2 emitted by a human life for one year is roughly 11,000 pounds. And the US car, including fuel, is roughly uh, 100,000 pounds. But the evolved transformer with new, uh, neural architecture search takes uh, 600 pounds of CO2, which is five cars for entire, entire lifetime. So we need to, green, to have green AI, right? We need both tiny ML for inference and also green AI for training, right? Some ways can, don't, don't touch my screen. So we need green AI to solve the environmental problem of NAS, okay? Um, so here uh, we solved this issue by reducing the carbon footprint by four orders of magnitude to appear in ACL 20 one year later. And our solution is recently covered by MIT News with green AI and tiny ML using the once for all network. And you see the picture, the high level idea is we design a once for all network and then we can get managed child nets for free catering for the cloud device, the mobile device, and also the tiny device, okay? We just need to train once and then we can cater for different deployment scenarios, different applications. So the high level idea is decouple training and search. So conventional neural architecture search there are two for loops outside the expensive feed forward and backward loop, okay? There's a meta controller uh, to, to control how many episodes to search. And there's another outer loop controlling the de different devices. And there's a post training iterations to retrain the searched architecture, which is very expensive. So here we decouple training and search and move the expensive portion forward and backward into a general once for all network. And it's decoupled from neural architecture search. No matter if you have a cloud device, you have a mobile device, you have a microcontroller, you can reuse the same once for all network and grab different sub networks from the once for all network. So during search, uh, since the model is already trained and each sub network can function individually, we just need to sample from this OFA, get a small lightweight sub network and measure the accuracy. No training is needed. Therefore, it's very lightweight in computation. And finally, we can directly deploy without retraining since the once for all network is already trained and each sub network can function individually. Therefore, we have deployment scenarios including both the cloud and the, and the tiny AI. We can greatly save the uh, search cost. So this is the idea. We train a once for all network and then when we are deploying on mobile on the on the cloud, we can grab a larger sub network. Um, when we have a mobile, we can grab a mid-sized sub network. When we have a microcontroller, we can grab a tiny sub network. Okay, and they all share the weights. So weight sharing is very important here. They all share the same weight, and they don't need to be retrained. So the challenge is that since they have weight sharing, how to prevent different sub networks? from interfering with each other, okay? They all share the weight, but we need to prevent them from interfering with each other. And the solution here is using progressive shrinking. Using this method, we can support more than 10 to the 19 different subnetworks without interfering with each other. And if we do progressive shrinking across four dimensions, the resolution, the kernel size, the depth, the width. So this is the overall schedule. We train the full model first, okay? And then we shrink the model across these four dimensions in resolution, kernel, depth, and width. And then we jointly fine tune both the large, middle, and small different subnetworks until we reach the, the final goal, okay? So small subnetworks are nested in the large subnetworks, okay? 
and we cast the training process of the Westfall network as a progressive shrinking and joint fine tuning process. So progressive shrinking, the, the, the uh, expression sounds very familiar with network pruning, right? If you're familiar with my work back in 2015 in NIPS, learning both with connections for efficient neural nets uh, introduced, we can prune the neural net. So pruning um, just shrink the model in a certain dimension, for example, the width dimension. And progressive shrinking uh, have four dimensions, the width, the depth, the kernel size, and also the resolution. It's more holistic. And network pruning just focus on the one small model in the end, the pruned model. So we just fine tune the small net. But here we fine tune both the large and the small neural nets. And the whole broad spectrum of neural nets can be automatically generated without having to retrain. So this is how progressive retraining shrinking works. So first we have elastic resolution, okay? From a large resolution, gradually uh, we support small resolution. And then elastic kernel size. First we support seven by seven kernel, then through a transform matrix, uh, we crop the center of 25 ways uh, to use as a five by five, um, uh, kernel, and then we crop the center nine weights to get a three, three by three kernel. And then we support elastic depth from the full, full depth to partial depth. For example, in this example, uh, we first have a depth uh, of four, which is a full depth. And then uh, we shrink the depth to support both a depth of three, which is O2, and a depth of four, which is O1. And they are e uh, equally sampled. And the third step, we support both O1, which has depth of four, and O2, which has a depth of three, and also O3, which has a depth of two. And you can see here, they have weight sharing. For example, O1 and O2 and O3 all share uh, those blue block and also the green block. And finally, we have uh, uh, the from full width to the partial width through elastic width. So first we have a width of four channels, and then we sort the number of the channels according to their importance, which is the absolute value. And then we support both uh, four channels, which is O1, and also three channels, which is O2, and they share the width of the first three channels. And we do the channel importance sorting again and reorganize again and begin to support both three channels in O1, uh, sorry, four channels in O1, three channels in O2, and also two channels in O3, and they have they have the shared weight. Okay, so this is the uh, put it together. We have uh, four steps: first to support elastic resolution, and then elastic kernel size, and then elastic depth, and then elastic width. And weight sharing is supported in all these all these scenarios. So the performance of subnetworks on ImageNet showing that progressive shrinking gave a huge advantage over the non-progressive shrinking counterpart. With progressive shrinking, we can improve the accuracy of a broad spectrum of models by about 3%. So far, we talk about how to train the ones for our network, the first part, and then how do we do the search, okay? Since we have the model already pre-trained and we can support different resolution kernel depths with a lot of dimensions, we can easily just do search either by evolution or even random search works pretty well. So to save the uh, cost of evaluating a good model, we design a model twin, which the twin is like the model. Okay, It has a similar accuracy, similar latency as a predictor. It's a machine learning model predicting the accuracy and latency of a machine learning model. And finally, we have a, a pretty good uh, performance measured on the Pixel 1 mobile phone compared with the state-of-the-art uh, personalized efficient net and also the mo uh, mobile net version 3. So compared with the efficient net, we can run about 2.6 times faster um, with 80.1 top point accuracy. It's pretty uh, amazing. We can have uh, more than 80% top point accuracy uh, on the mobile device, okay? Um, and the uh, with a similar latency of roughly 150 milliseconds with a quantization, we can achieve about 3.8% higher accuracy than the mobile, uh, than the efficient net. And there's no uh, tricky uh, tuning parameters in this case. And compared with the mobile net version three, both with 73.3 .3 
uh, top on accuracy, we can make it 1.5 times faster, or with a similar latency, we can make it a 4% higher accuracy. A very interesting phenomenon is that this training schedule is better than training from scratch. So this green line, green dots, showing, is showing that we just reinitialize the architecture that we found, but train from scratch. Okay? And this, green, this, this red line have exactly the same latency because they are exactly the same architecture, but uh, they can be roughly 2% uh, higher accuracy. This is because the progressive shrinking is a very good constraint, very good regularization. Uh, regularization means the constraint. You not only have to do, behave well with yourself, but also you have to work well when you are weight shared together with other kernels and other configurations. So very strong constraint, very strong regularization, improved the accuracy. Not only the architecture is good, but also the training schedule is good. And similar observation is observed on uh, on this case. So roughly uh, one or two percent improve of the top end accuracy. Um, so we plotted the whole spectrum of the efficient neural nets we have so far, ranging from ResN50, MobileNet, Proclis NAS, Efficient Net, MobileNet version 3, ResNext uh, exception. Uh, we want a low computation and a high accuracy. Okay? And here we've achieved 80% top end accuracy with only 595 million max on the top level. And OFA enables fast the special specialization on diverse hardware platforms. So we can uh, broadly measure the performance across many different devices, like Samsung phones, uh, i7, uh, Google Pixel 2, uh, LG G8, uh, all have uh, Snapdragon, Qualcomm, uh, CPUs or DSPs. These are mobile devices and we consistently outperform the mobile network in three, but are pretty pretty much large. In, like here, Google Pixel 2, previously 80, 50 milliseconds, now it's roughly 35 milliseconds. And on GPU and CPU and even hardware accelerator, we have pretty good support. And since here, Xilinx accelerator doesn't support mobile network version three yet, this is mobile version two. And we can improve the latency by quite a large margin, even on these specialized hardware accelerators. And we find the specialized architecture for different hardware platform is very important. So they have similar accuracy, but quite different, uh, different um, not similar, accuracy, sorry. So on different hardware platforms, they have quite different neural architecture. Like to achieve the same goal, uh, the Xilinx IPG perform, perform well with a lot of three, three by three kernels, since it's well supported of the depth wise layer and Xilinx IPG with three by three kernel. And the CPU, it's um, more diverse, three by three, five by five, seven by seven, and GPU is much wider and larger kernel because GPU has more parallelism. And with this technique, we participated in last year's uh, Visual Week Words Challenge. And this is using our first generation technique uh, on microcontroller to fit a, fit a peak memory size up to 50 kilobytes, and model size 20 to 50, and uh, model size also 250 kilobytes, and Mac should be uh, smaller than 80, 80 million Mac. The visual weak words is basically saying whether there's a person in front of a camera, okay? And this is a super tight constraint, and we did it very well uh, with a 94% uh, top end accuracy, and with a very tight uh, fit of the constraint, okay? And uh, Proxy is NAS, our first generation solution is being available in Amazon Auto Glue and the Facebook PyTorch Hub. And also we open sourced uh, pretty much everything online. Okay, so here we have a demo. Hi, today I'll be demonstrating our models on the network. So first, let's take a look at our demo. The board is equipped with the STM32 M746 MCU, a very low power and affordable device, which uses only 3.4 watts and costs only about $10. It features an ARM Cortex M7 core, 220 kilobyte SRAM and 1 megabyte flash. This demo it runs at 260 MHz to detect that there's a person in the mirror. We also optimized the runtime to accelerate the computation. Now, let me show you a demo. 
As you can see, the LCD on the board shows the capture frames and where there is a person in the frame. So when I point the camera at me, the LCD will turn to black to indicate that there is a person in the camera. Next, when I move on the camera, the LCD will turn to green to indicate that there is no person in the frame. So next, let's try some more challenge scenario to compare our model with mobile app. So let's see a few scenarios to compare the models. If we use mobile app, the accuracy is about 75% and the FPS is 5.5. On the other hand, we can achieve 83% accuracy and 10 FPS if we use fast SR, which is faster and more accurate by design spatial network for public audio and public health. Okay, so those are just the model optimization. Would it be also optimize the compiler and runtime? So we can save the SRAM by roughly 55% compared with TensorFlow Micro, TensorFlow Lite for microcontroller, and save the flash by 69% compared with the TensorFlow Lite Micro. And if we improve the performance uh, with our specialized compiler and runtime by pruning redundant code, in structures make it a three times speed up compared with the TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers with our customized kernel. And then back to our discussion on green AI, we made it possible to save uh, the CO2 emission by three or four orders of magnitude. And to summary, uh, we amortize the search cost of using once for all network across many sub workloads, sub networks and deployment scenarios. And another, uh, if you're interested in this area, another idea is to put human in the loop when you are designing the network, just rather than just using AutoML to just search for that, okay? All right, so um, OFA has broad applications, which I will put as future work, uh, future presentations in efficient transformer, efficient video recognition, efficient 3D vision, and efficient gun compression, okay? So to summary, today we talk about once for all network for efficient inference on diverse hardware platforms. And we presented an effective progressive shrinking approach uh, to train the once for all network. And we can shrink the model across four different dimensions. We fine tune both the large model and small networks, and we can surpass performance by state of the art models by a large margin. And most interestingly, it saved the search cost. 80% top on ImageNet accuracy and there are 600 million max. Uh, this solution received the first place in the third low power computer vision challenge DSP track using Qualcomm DSPs and LG phones and SECV19. And the first place in the fourth low power computer vision challenge in New Region 19, both the classification and detection track. Okay. Um, in order to help the community um, to grow and we released the 50 plus different pre-trained OFA models, including the CPU, the GPU, the FPGA, the DSP, across many different uh, platforms and different constraints. You can use one line of code to use this model. And to cater for the de uh, more developers, we also released the full training code and search code and pre-trained OFA network that if you have a new network, a new hardware you wanna specialize, you are well, very welcome uh, to commit the, the, the specialized OFA model uh, to do the GitHub. And we'll come everyone to uh, collaborate on this uh, exciting project. Okay, finally, some references from our group, uh, model compression, neural architecture search, efficient vision, efficient NLP, and efficient hardware, and also machine learning for EDA. With that, I would like to conclude this talk. We wanna make AI more efficient with tiny computational resources and tiny human resources. Thank you. Great, Sa thank you, uh, Son. This is a very interesting uh, presentation. Obviously, a lot of a lot of research went in, into this 20, 30 minutes presentation. Uh, we have uh, several questions online and we can answer some of them. Uh, some questions are hardware related. For example, uh, uh, what are the hardware parameters that is provided as input to, to, to the model to, to adapt to, for different hardware platforms? And somewhat related question is, uh, what is needed to profile the latency on specialized hardware accelerators? 
basically the question is how, how do you optimize your hardware, uh, your, your models, your approach to specific hardware and how, how do you measure the performance? No, okay, so good question. Uh, measuring the latency is very important in the search process because some models have low flops but not necessarily low latency. So here we put the latency as the uh, feedback to the machine learning, the search process, just the latency, okay? And for our work in HAQ, hardware aware quantization, we have a hardware simulator. Therefore, in that piece of work, we also put energy in the, uh, in the, uh, in the feedback. So energy and the latency. Yeah. And to measure the latency for specialized accelerator, Zilinx provide a very helpful tool. Um, the, uh, now it's called Zilinx, uh, the Vitus AI tool that can uh, provide the latency for each layer very uh, easily. And we can see the uh, search the model with the latency in mind can achieve a 40% higher arithmetic intensity than those uh, other non-specialized uh, non model. Okay? Arithmetic intensity means whether it's memory bounded ops per byte. If it's low, therefore means it's memory bounded. You fetch one byte of data, you do very little op on top of it. And we want to save the memory bandwidth by uh, increasing the arithmetic intensity. And then we can actually achieve actually 57% higher G ops per second compared with the non-optimized model. Okay, great. But several questions related to the to the model and to the uh, training process. Maybe again, I can summarize some of them. Uh, some people asking if you do quantization to integral eight, uh, and uh, what is kind of the accuracy and latency uh, kind of on the graph you showed. Uh, some kind of popular question is whether retraining would still improve the accuracy after you, after you do. Uh, the compression and everything. Um, then questions on the model size um, after you do, especially for the tiny email. Uh, can you answer some of those, Dante? Oh uh, yeah, those are good questions. So in this piece of work, the I, I, uh, CVPR 19, uh, HAQ, Hardware Aware Automated Quantization, I think this work answers those questions. So. Uh, we definitely need to fine tune to improve the accuracy of the quantized model. And uh, quantization where fine tuning is quite important, especially for low bit quantization. But it's very time consuming. Therefore, in this year, CVPR, we proposed another work to quickly evaluate the accuracy without fine tuning of a quantized model. And that is called uh, APQ, um, Joint Architecture Search Pruning and Quantization. To, uh, to appear in CVPR 2020. Basically that, that work combines uh, these three pieces of work together to jointly do architecture search, uh, channel pruning, and also, and also mixed precision quantization. Okay, great. So I think we have several more questions, uh, but I would suggest to move them to the forum and we'll have more discussion on this uh, to the online forum. And for the sake of time, I think we have to move on. Thank you again, Asan, for a very interesting presentation. I, I, I we hope we'll see you again at Tiny Email Talks and Tiny Email Events and more, more papers and more results coming out from your research team. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. To acknowledge uh, Tiny Email Talks uh, webcast sponsor, H Impulse. Again, if you're interested. Uh, please visit their website and, and see their offerings, their products. And uh, for additional sponsorship, if you're, if you're a company and, or if you're interested, please contact Betty at tinyml.org for more information. So next uh, presentations will be, uh, next TinyML talks uh, will be in uh, two weeks on Thursday by Facebook uh, on AR and uh, uh, by um, uh, Synopsys on uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. Control also two very interesting topics for, for the tiny email community. And as usual, you are going to see announcement and registrations by email and on LinkedIn and Twitter and all, all the social media and obviously meetups. And um, also, I should mention and should encourage you to join tiny email uh, meetups. I think we have about 2,000 people <clears throat> as of uh, 
today and um, and the community is growing very very fast um, at this point i would like to thank you our presenters and thank you the audience for attending tiny email presentation uh, talks uh, we hope that you found them interesting and uh, useful for what, what you're doing if you're interested in uh, participating in any way in tiny email either presenting or starting meetups please, please contact us for the talk specifically uh, the email is talks at tinyemail.org and uh, we will ho we hope to to see you uh, online again in two weeks thank you all